Hello everyone, Detlef here, and welcome to another segment of the LCC channel. This time we're going to dive into a series of sessions that will talk about configuring the LCC nodes for signals. But before we dive into that, I wanted to spend some time today just talking about why do we want a signal, what are we looking for in a signaling system, what's the prototype doing, and give you a quick demo of, or a tour, if you will, of our demo layout so you can see what we're going to be using to develop all this. All right, to get started, let's look at why we want a signal. Alright, so as we get into the idea of signaling, we have to really decide what we're trying to achieve here. What are the real thoughts behind us modeling a particular system? Um, you know, with that video of the train going by, that's really cool and it's neat to see. But what's really going on there? Is it the light that's changing that's interesting? Or are we really trying to communicate information? A couple options for us. Uh, frankly, one of the most simple signaling systems that are out there is a true manual block system. This is set up with just toggle switches. You just have a, a bunch of signals wired to a power supply via toggle switches. And if it's red, the block is occupied. If it's green, it's unoccupied. And as the operators go by, they just flip the switches. It communicates occupancy. And it also communicates to other operators that this place is actually uh, in use or not in use. So it's pretty neat. Another option might be to go with some sort of an eye candy system. In other words, there's a lot of systems out there where uh, the signal detects some movement and it just says, okay, something must be happening here. I'll switch to red. And then once it clears, uh, it goes through a timer and it switches to yellow and then back to green. Really no logic between it, but again, it's uh, it's nice. It's animation. It gives some sort of action to the trains. Whatever. Uh, but assuming we want a little bit more than that, what are our options? And so um, I've kind of grouped them into three or four different groups. There's the simple logic controllers. Um, there's uh, standalone logic systems. And then there's the central PC-based computers. And then finally is what I, I, we're going to talk about here is layout command control. But I want to kind of go through these okay, cool. with you. So, you know, um, for simple logic systems, let me pull out a couple examples here. Uh, as a tracks does a great job on that. They basically, you could reproduce whatever you would like uh, with their systems. They, they are standalone modules and it really emulates in many ways the, uh, the prototype. You have a little logic system that um, handles whether it's, uh, you know, the train sensing or whatever or signal controllers or whatever and it will actually figure out what it needs to do. Other ones uh, out there, integrated signal systems, they have a pretty good system as well. Um, I guess there's a, a simpler version. Atlas puts out one um, that is, uh, it's kind of geared toward a single line, if you will. It's a standalone operation, but it's, but it's basically detecting and it'll have upstream and downstream uh, signal operation. It's kind of a daisy chain. It works well for that. I don't know if it'll get into more complicated interlocking and so on. I'm not sure. Um, it does say so coming soon, but maybe uh, it'll be a while before that's out. Anyway, then we move into, um, let's see what we got here, Arduino type systems, right? So Arduino is a standalone uh, logic controller. Uh, you can program these. I've done it actually for part of my own layout. Very effective, very easy to use. Uh, the complexity comes in when you start having multiple Arduinos. Let's say I uh, have a, you know, multiple areas where you want signals. Now you got to have these things communicate back and forth with each other. Very doable. Again, I, I'm not um, saying it can't be done and there's a pretty good user group out there that's doing this. So if that's of interest to you, it's very cost effective. A um, little bit of effort to make sure the programming's right, um, but you know that's part of the fun too. And then you move into um, what are really um, computer or PC based signaling systems. Um, one of the more popular ones is uh, CMRI. It's a Bruce Chubb system. Basically, they have a system which uh, you know has a bunch of field inputs and field output cards, and then it all routes it back to your PC, which lets you run your trains however you'd like. 
Um, you know, another one that is out there is the CTI Electronics, and probably the grandfather of them all is JMRI itself. JMRI has an open source system. Uh, anytime you have a PC, you could actually bring all the I.O. back into the JMRI system, and you can have all the logic happen in there. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure a lot of people run LCC with the JMRI handling the logic. So those are some options. I personally went out with the LCC, and I'm going to put the signal logic locally uh, for the very reason that um, it's it's neat. It's You just turn it on, and it's running. You don't have to have a PC running for it. I know there's different opinions on it, but that's the approach I've taken. All right, that's a little bit of a survey of the different signaling systems out there. So the next piece I want to talk about then is really, uh, before you dive into signaling, folks, make sure that you understand what you're modeling. Um, you know, and that's the prototype. You know, if you're going to go through all the, the brain damage, all the effort of putting in some signals, make sure that they reflect what, you know, the prototype is doing. Uh, hundreds of years of experience go into a prototype and um, us kind of winging it, if you try to do it that way, you'll find out that you get stuck in corners. There's reasons for the way things are out in the prototype. So how do you do that? Well, you look at the prototype, you know, and um, I, for myself, I like to look up rule, rule books for uh, the railroads that I'm modeling. I'm very much interested in that. Um, so you can look up rule books, you can see what the different signal indications are for the period that you are interested in. Uh, I like the Southern Pacific. My freelance railroad runs uh, the same kind of signaling systems as the SP does. There's uh, tables out there where people have summarized the different uh, aspects, the different views of the uh, signals uh, for different operating conditions. Here's one for a CSX. You know, you can do a quick search on it. You can find these out there. Um, this one happens to be for Union Pacific. You can see all the different signaling aspects. Now, what's interesting about these, you know, while they look similar and some have the same terminology like clear, what you'll find is that railroads have subtle differences. And in a uh, large way, you can group them into three particular areas. And there's the Western region uh, that has uh, used the General Code of Operating Rules, GCOR. There's the Eastern region, which is NORAC. And then if you model Canada, Canada has their own Canadian Railroads Operating Regulations. So um, if you look it up, you can see uh -huh. that there's, um, you know, the, 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 the general groupings here. So if you, for instance, this particular website groups the different railroads based on who are NORAC roads, who are these Canadian roads, uh, I guess Chicago is another group, and then GCOR roads. The reason I mention this is that uh, NORAC is probably the most popular to the, on the eastern U.S., and that is also the standard terminology that LCC, particularly uh, digit um, RR circuits, not digit tracks, sorry about that, RR circuits um, is using in their logic configuration. So as you go through it, you'll see a lot of the terms there match up pretty well. If you were to jump over to GCOR, you have to do a little bit of a crosswalk to get the same terms for the same kind of indications, if that makes sense. Okay, okay, okay. Anyway, a little bit of an introduction there. Um, in this next segment, I'm going to go over uh, a quick review of our uh, demo layout. So let's take a look at that and then we'll wrap it up for this session. A uh, quick tour here of the demo layout. Uh, really it's simply on the left side a single track that breaks into two tracks on the right side. Um, far to the right it's just simply a power strip and then we have our uh, PowerPoint for the LCC system that feeds all the um, all the different power needs for the nodes and uh, the red line goes back to the computer, the red um, Ethernet cable goes back to the computer, although it's not Ethernet, right? It's, um, it's your LCC CAN bus. And then we have just a very short LCC network with one uh, line going to the first node and a jumper off to the second node, then a terminator. Uh, that's about it. Very simple system here. Uh, the first uh, LCC, um, signal LCC, drives uh, the I.O. for the um, BOD4CP, and this uh, has been discussed in previous videos. Um, I've added some signals. Well, I think they were on the previous videos as well. Um, 
basically two home signals, if you can use the term, uh, one for each track represented here, and then on the other side, a uh, double-headed one represented there. That pretty much took up all of the I.O. of that first signal LCP, uh, signal LCC node. Um, the interest, though, was I wanted to also show how to work the uh, track circuits. So having run out of I.O., I added a seg second signal LCC, and those um, really only um, one side is being used for that, you can see. And it's on a flat ribbon cable where it splits to what I'm calling a distance signal on the west end. And then over here, a distance signal on the east end. So all this is working right now. Uh, we're going to go through this with our videos. Um, what you can do, though, is see that this is a, a car. I got a power supply here, basically a DCC signal coming from a Prodigy Advance and um, that's feeding into the track blocks and so on through here. So as soon as this car hits the OS section, you'll see that these signals drop to red as well as the distance signal went over to yellow. And uh, same on this side. Um, you know, remember they were green before. And now that that OS block is, is occupied, if I pull it away again, as soon as the signal clears, now we got it again. I can throw the switch here with my, uh, we got a push button here, so I'll throw the switch. Now, of course, since that uh, siding is occupied, again, I have the distance signal, the approach signal showing an approach, and then stop. And the turnout's thrown, uh, and then to the siding here, which contains the, the uh, hopper car. Now, if I take the hopper car off, um, give it a moment to clear, and now we see that the distance signal shows green, and then the approach signal shows diverging approach, and it all works like it should. On the other direction, we see that um, the distance signal for the main is showing approach and then stop for the home signal, but the siding has a green. I don't have an approach for the uh, siding track, but anyway, that's enough for the demonstration anyway. Throw the switch again, and you'll see the cycle back showing green over green on these and then green on this side anyway we're going to go through all the logic to make that happen and uh hope you enjoy it we'll talk soon